Hey, how's it going? This is Hellbent, and welcome to AutoHotKey GUI Mini Tutorial number 24. In this tutorial, we're going to move on from a previous tutorial, I believe it was number 16, where we introduced multiple GUIs. Um, this is going to be a kind of a continuation of that. So what we're going to do in this time is we're going to create a layered GUI. Now, <clears throat> Um, once you start getting into custom GUIs such as this up here, um, you're often going to want to have multiple layers, uh, especially if when you press on a button or something like that, if it uh, switches between images or if things move around, you're going to have distortions if you put them all on the same layer so you want to have uh, multiple layers occupying the same space so one layer will be on top of the other on top of the next on top of the next so we're gonna do something like that but we're gonna do it a little bit different for this tutorial um, where we're gonna just actually create a second GUI on top of our first one when we press a button and it's gonna move around with our GUI like as if it's a part of it so the first thing we're going to do is, uh, normally I usually have a GUI set up, but because these are things that I haven't covered a lot of, I'm going to build it right from scratch. So <clears throat> the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show my GUI. Um, because I'm going to be using multiple GUIs, I'm actually going to name every single GUI, just like I discussed in the first part of this tutorial. So I'm going to name this one 1. So the name of this GUI is 1, and then later on I can refer back to it by using that name. <clears throat> so I'm going to GUI 1 show, and then I need a position. I don't care about its X and Y position, but later on for the next GUI I am going to care. But for this one I don't really care. So I'm going to create this one, and it's going to be a width of 500 and a height of 500. And now I'm going to give it a name, and I'm just going to call it GUI Mini Tut 2424. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So here's my GUI. I can save it and I can run it. And here we go. We have the basic template that we're going to be working off of. Now I'm going to put in some of its options. I'm going to do its color, always on top, etc., etc., whatever I want to do. So I'm going to do GUI. And then once again, I have to use its name each time I add do something with this GUI. So GUI1, and then this time I'm going to do always on top. So <clears throat> this GUI is going to be always on top. And I'm also going to add a color to this to make it easier for you to see on your screen. So GUI1 once again, and then color. And I'm going to make it black so that way it's nice and easy to see. And now I'm going to add some controls to it. The first thing I'm going to add is I'm going to add a edit box. So I'm going to do GUI 1 colon add and then edit. And I'll put it X10, Y10. And <clears throat> I'm going to make it evenly spaced on my GUI. So I have a width of 500. So I'm going to make this a width of 500 minus how much X on 10 on each side, so it'll be 480. So it'll cover pretty much the whole screen up at the top, and I'll make its height. I'll make its height 400. Okay, I'm going to associate a variable with it. I'm going to keep it simple. I'm just going to call it Edit One, and I don't need to do it. I'm not going to be using this to uh, go to any labels or anything like that. So I'm okay with everything there. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a button. So once again, GUI, and then the GUI that I'm working with is one add button. I'm going to position this one. I'm going to make this button 200 pixels wide, and I want it to be centered with my screen. So that gives me, I have 300 pixels to work with. So if I cut that in half, that gives me, I want my X to be at 150. The Y. I know that this one is going to be it's going to be down to 410 when it's finished and I have 500 I want this to be about centered so I have 90 pixels um, I'm gonna make the height 40 so I have 50 pixels to work with so I'm gonna do 4 
435 so that would be that would give me my button is centered within the space that's left over what did I say it was 435 okay I'm gonna make its width like I said 200 because that's the amount of space that I'm calculating for my X position and I'm going to attach this to a label and I'm gonna call the label launch GUI uh, GUI2 launch GUI2 before I forget I'm going to come down here and make that label okay so let me see I think we have everything that we need to have a quick look so here we go here's our GUI oh I forgot to put some text so let's have So we'll put some text on our button. So here we go. So when we press this button, it'll execute this label, and that label in that label is where we're going to build our second GUI. So in here, we're going to do this pretty much the same thing we did with, with those, but we're going to have a few different changes this time. So the first thing I'm going to do is <clears throat> I could test to see if this GUI is open or if it exists, but I don't really need to but what I really want to do is I just want to make sure that if there's a previous GUI 2 when I click on that button I want to make sure that it gets destroyed so I'm just gonna I don't care if I if it exists or not right away as soon as I press it I'm gonna destroy any previous version if it didn't exist before no problem nothing happens if it did exist before it's gonna get destroyed so GUI and then the name this time I'm going to be calling this GUI GUI2 so it's 2 and the command I'm going to use is destroy okay so as soon as I press that button if there was a previous GUI number 2 I'm going to destroy it and actually I think I have to come back yeah I need to come back in a second to do something else actually I might as well do it now so what I'm going to do um, no I'll do it after so what I'm going to do now that that GUI is destroyed I'm going to check the position of the GUI 1 because I'm going to use its position to position my second GUI so I'm just going to do use a win get position and I'm going to call it the X variable that I'm going to use I'm going to call it X1 the Y variable I'm going to call Y1 Oops. and I don't need its width or height but now I'm going to go for I could type in the name of the window that I created but because I just pressed finished pressing that button that's going to be the active window so all I have to do in here is for win title I just type A which means get the title of the use the title of the currently active window so now that I have that later on when I go to show the second GUI I can use the X and Y positions to position the second GUI because I'm going to position the second GUI up in the corner of the first one or wherever I want it put it so now I can go now that I have that I can go ahead and add in my options for my second GUI so GUI the second GUI GUI 2 is the one I'm going to be working with and what do I want I want to do plus always on top I also want to remove the caption so I just want to have the center of the GUI left I don't want anything else except for the center part of it I don't want the border that's around it I don't need the close button I don't need the all the banners and everything like that so I'm gonna do minus caption and the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make the first GUI the owner of this GUI and this does two things <clears throat> one is it makes sure that this second GUI always stays on top of this first GUI even if I click on this one when this one is open this one will still stay on top because it's it knows that it's a child of this one first up here or it knows that it's supposed to be on top of it so I'm gonna do plus owner and then the owner of this one is going to be GUI 1 
Okay, and the second thing that this is going to do is when it launches the second GUI, rather than having two icons down here for two GUIs, it's just going to have the one icon for this one up here. So that's the two things that it's going to do for us. Okay, now that I have that, I'm going to give it a color, GUI2, color, and I'm going to make this one silver. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some controls on it. I am going to do, I'm going to add a GUI2 add. I'm going to add an edit box. Actually, I'm going to pretty much do the same thing as I did up there. I'm going to add an edit box and a button. <clears throat> and we're going to see how to pass values between different GUIs and submit and everything like that. I think I might have covered some of that in the first tutorial, but it was a while ago, so I don't really remember. Okay, I'm going to position this at... X, I'm going to do the X margin, and I'm going to do the Y margin. So it'll have basically roughly about 10 pixels, 10 pixels, give or take, on either side, and 10 pixels from the top to bottom. Um, let me see. I'm going to give it a width of 200, and I'm going to give it a height of 200. So I'll make it a square. I'm going to name this uh, Edit2 because I'm original like that. And I think I'm good with that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a button for it. And I'm going to place it. I'm going to make it a 200 width button and I'm going to place it directly underneath the previous control. So I'm just going to put it on the X margin and I'm going to give it a width of 200, a height of 40, and then everything else is good. Um, I don't need a variable, but I do need a label. So I'm going to do a label. I'm going to call this update and close. So we have a label called update and close, and I'll come down here and put it in. And we'll decide what to do with it in a minute. <clears throat> now I'll put some text on it to say basically the same thing. press on that it'll destroy any previous version it'll get my position it'll make it always on top no caption minus own plus owner color silver add edit add a button and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna show that GUI so GUI 2 show and this time we're gonna use the position that we had gotten from the original GUI. So no matter, we're going to create this GUI in the center of the screen, but if we move it over here or over there or whatever, when we press that button, it's going to get wherever its position is, and then we're going to we're going to figure out how to position this second GUI, this smaller GUI, in the top corner of that other GUI. So we're going to do, I'm going to do this as an expression, so I'm going to do percent, and then in quotes, I'm going to say X, and then beside that, I am going to take that x1 variable, which is the current x position of the top left corner of uh, the, our first GUI. And to ballpark it, I know that I have a width of roughly about 220, and I have a GUI of 500 up here, so that gives me 280. So I want to basically add 280, and this will be approximately in the top right corner or the it'll be on the the left the right side of the that GUI all right next I'm gonna add in its Y position in quotes I'm gonna put Y Y1 is the variable that I've associated with the position of our first GUI and I'm going to add now that caption when that caption has a height of roughly about 25 
it's it's roughly about 25 26 pixels so I'm gonna start with 25 and it's just past experience that that I have that number <clears throat> and we'll, we'll play around with it afterwards if it's not right and we're gonna let it size itself because we have all these controls they have their own thing and I'm going to name this um, I'm just gonna call it GUI 2 I think we have everything that we need right now so let's go ahead and have a look at what we have so here we have our first GUI and no matter if we move it over here or not when we press launch the second GUI should come up somewhere right about there and we'll play around with its position if it's not just right alright so I can see we'll move it we'll move it one pixel over to the right and we'll move it one or two pixels down so we'll move it two pixels down and we'll move it one more pixel to the right and there I'm okay with it having a little tiny sliver of uh, black around it alright but right now if I go and move this that stays there and that's not what I want I want it when I move this I want that to come with it so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a we're gonna look for a message and the message we're gonna look for is one it's gonna send a message when we as we're moving as soon as I stop as soon as I release the mouse button to stop moving the GUI it's gonna send a message and we're gonna look for that message and as soon as it receives that message we're gonna move that second GUI as well so we're gonna say on message and the message that we're looking for the code for it is 0x232 it's uh, on exit on window move exit alright now I'm gonna create a function so I'm gonna put the name of the function that I'm gonna create here and I'm gonna call it uh, move window it doesn't matter what I call it <clears throat> alright so I have that now I'm gonna come down here to the bottom of my script out of the way and it doesn't matter I can put it right here I could put it up there it doesn't really matter where I put it but I like to put my functions down near the bottom so here I am going to do what, what did I call that move window okay so the name is move window I don't need to pass any parameters to it or any values into it so we can come into here and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to te check to see if our second GUI exists or not because if it doesn't exist I don't want it to suddenly show our second GUI when it's not supposed to exist so that's the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say if window exists So if window exists and the window that I'm going to be looking for is the window that I've called GUI2. So if that window exists, what I want to do is I want to, because this trigger only, is only going to get triggered if I'm moving the first GUI, I know that the, the first GUI is my active window. So I can use that that when get position for the active window again I don't need to specify the title of it I can just use the active window because I know it's going to be the active window if it's in this part of the script so I'm gonna say get the position and <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a second variable for X and Y so X2 is going to be the new position of this window here even though this one here shares the same name as this one here it doesn't matter because we're inside of a function these are actually two different variables even though they share the same name they're not actually the same variable so I can go ahead and use x1 and it's not going to cause me any problem x2 is now going to be what I'm using for this here so x2 equals x1 and I just do the little bit of math that I did before so it was x1 plus 281 All right, and then I'm going to do the same. I'm going to create another one for y2, and it's going to equal it's going to equal y1 plus 27. 
now that I have the I've compensated for the differences between them now I can go ahead and show my second GUI again so I'm gonna do in here GUI to show and I'm going to move X is going to be the value stored in X2 and Y is going to be the value stored in Y2 and there we go I think we're good so now if I run this again if I launch the second GUI as I move it now as soon as I let go it should move our second GUI all right so it's like as if they're the same GUI okay next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to come in here which is the label for our button which is update and close what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take if anything was typed into this ed second edit box that's attached to that second GUI if anything's typed in there we're gonna submit that so what we need to do is submit for that specific GUI which is GUI 2 so we oh my bad GUI and then we're gonna do for number two and we are submitting we're gonna submit no hide so if we typed anything into that edit box now it's gonna get stored in the edit to variable next what we're gonna do is we are going to destroy our second GUI so we're gonna do GUI 2 which is the one we want to destroy and we're gonna destroy it now that it's destroyed what we're gonna do is with whatever we typed in up there we're gonna display it in our first GUI in its edit box not a very practical program but it demonstrates how to do it so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go use GUI control the sub in the sub command parameter what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the name of the GUI we want to use so it's GUI 1 the second parameter that we're going to put in here is the variable that we've associated with that control which is edit one and then last is the value that we're going to put into that edit box and the value is whatever we stored into the variable edit two when we did our submit so if edit two has a value it'll now get displayed in edit one I think we have our program so I'll save it run it right now we have nothing on this if I launch the second one and if I type something in there when I hit update and close it should close destroy this second GUI and update it over to here and there we go all right that's it for this one and on the next one I will uh, maybe we'll retouch this one and add in like a uh, some custom controls where we have where we build all of our GUIs all at one time <clears throat> maybe I'll, I'll do some moving stuff I don't know we'll see all right anyways